So welcome back to the channel. We're back on the L322 Overland build this morning. Number of jobs that need to be done. Last week I did a walk around, have a look at everything that I thought needed to be fixed, changed or modified. And the list got pretty big last week. So as in most cases, when people start tinkering with cars like this, on a Sunday night, Monday morning, huge part orders go into Land Rover suppliers across the country. So what do we have here? We've got a new pollen filter that needs to go in. I had a look at the one that's already on the vehicle. Pretty bad shape, needs to come out. The windscreen cowl cover, um, where the windscreen wipers are, there's a plastic cowl. There are three sort of insert clips, these things. One of them's in, one of them's broken, and one of them is missing. So that's a job that needs to be done. Make sure that is in. I've got a set of K&N high performance filters. They come in a pair. Big fan of K&N filters. Most of my cars have had them. The Defender's got them as well. Reason why I'm going with K&N and not putting factory air filters in is it's going through an ECU, ECU remap in a couple of weeks time. And I need to get the benefit out of it paper filters probably won't do so they're going to go in as well that's a quick hopefully quick 10-15 minute job the high level brake light I've got a replacement most of the LEDs aren't working on this side so that needs to come out and get fixed and there's a bunch of other things that need to be done some ham-fisted gibbon had had a go at the taking off the grill at some point in time and instead of just going in there like the factory manual says pull it decided to use some heavy, probably a sledgehammer to get it off. So at the bottom, there are four little clips that fit into sort of like a tongue, um, into an opening. Three of those are broken. So you actually touch the grill and it rattles up against the frame. It might as well come out. They're pretty inexpensive to do. So then it has, needs to have a new grill put in, which it should be a, just a quick 10 minute job. And I think that's about it. A um, couple of other things that I have done. I've replaced the number plates. They had some grungy car warehouse, so clearly it went through an auction site before I got it. And they slapped on a set of plates, but they're branded, they're off. And I got a really nice set of these gel 4D plates from a company called Prem Plates, so I thank you for that. They look absolutely stunning on the vehicle. No branding on it, look really cool. And I've replaced the driver's side door mirror cover there was a crack in the one on the driver's side you could see there was some chip out of the paint clearly it hit something at some point in time so there's a cover that goes over the top of that to protect that and that's all done as well so you don't want to see me futzing around with this i'm going to put this on time lapse enjoy the music and with the wonders of modern technology i'll see you in a couple of minutes talk to you soon
Right, welcome back. I figured it'd be a good idea to show you what's come off this vehicle in the last couple of weeks. So in no specific order, here is a set of really cheap, nasty plastic side grills. The fake chromas come off. One pollen filter looks like it hasn't been changed in at least six years. One set of worn, dirty, nasty, not OEM carpets. Two air filters, both of unknown origin, not even a pair. One autobiography black grill. Four clips missing on the bottom. Some hand-fisted gibbon had decided to pull this off with a sledgehammer replaced. One autobiography trim, also broken. Two fog lamps, one broken, the other one badly pitted from 10 years of being on the road. One lip spoiler, plastic, painted grey, chipped, cracked, broken, replaced. One high level brake light, faded, chipped, broken, only about three LEDs working. One pair of god-awful, nasty SW car superstore number plates replaced. One wiper arm didn't fit, not for a Range Rover. Two 12 volt sockets. One power plug not working. One bag of about 20 incandescent bulbs. And lastly, a knurled gear selector knob chewed up. All of that has come off in the last couple of weeks to replace with. So as you saw from the previous segment, a lot of stuff has come off this vehicle. Most of it was chipped and cracked or broken. In the video you saw with the easy lift when it was basically going to its extended height which is four inches above normal extended height so this thing can go to five inches above the extended height and i'll do a video on the easy lift kit i'll talk about that so what's happened on this vehicle since i've got it and i will insert a picture here this had side steps on it with the integrated mud flaps both sides were absolutely rotten the only thing that was pretty much holding them together was the rubber tread pad where I took it to get it serviced, that was all taken off, so they've all been replaced. The wheels are from a L405. These are 1065 models. These are now sitting on Discoverer 275 5520s. These are all-terrain Sport 3s. And as I think I mentioned before, these are much, much more planted on the road. The, the car feels much better on these tyres than it did on the road-based tires that were on it. The grills have been replaced all black. These came from Powerful UK and the side repeaters are smoked. These are now LEDs. Probably the biggest change is around the front. So around the front all of the grey plastic trim has come off. So the grill was cracked it wasn't held in by all of the different tabs on the bottom so I've taken that off and replaced it with a gloss black grill. I think it looks much better. Red Lang drove a plinth on the badge, same as a Defender. And then towards the bottom you can see there's a gloss trim on the bib spoiler. That was grey, it was painted, it was chipped, it was cracked. The two fog lights are LEDs, these are smoked as well and I've just taken the grills that hold them in place with some black rattle can gloss paint, sprayed them up and put them in. So as you can see Predominantly, it's all black. The driver's side door mirror, the cover on that, that was cracked, so we've replaced that. And round the back, there's some more subtle changes as well. So the high-level brake light across the top here, that was cracked. Most of the LEDs were broken on it and not working, so I've replaced that. And that's got the smoked uh, high-level brake light on it. 
Uh, looks really good in the dark. Put a new badge on the back with the red plinth, same as the Defender. This is from Powerful UK, so there's a number of things here. So this was actually off of the vehicle when I bought it. It was just, you could see the tape that was underneath it. So took all the tape off, used one of those caramel wheels. This is a one from Powerful UK as well. These are actually the reversing lights with the Powerful UK template. So it's like a 15 pound quick kit. You stick that on, you rub all this down, rattle can it with the gloss black paints, and I think they look quite good. These are from Prem Plates in the UK. Really look cool. These are 4D, so these are actually raised numbers. So I really like those. But I think the back of the vehicle looks much better in its sort of stealth red black and sort of white or the silver for the badging so overall i'm really happy with the way things have come out a couple of things that are going to happen over the coming weeks number one it's going into a remap so in a couple of weeks time it will go to empire tuning in colchester for a complete remap and that's one reason why the k and n filters have gone in and hopefully we'll see some input performance on both torque bhp Drivability, people have had remaps of these, have just you know been saying it's wonderful and it transforms the vehicle. But we'll see. A couple of other things. I've got the easy lift uh, suspension module in. With the L322s, they do not have the little jog dial um, extension on it. Because the ECU is in the back, basically underneath this, uh, filler tank behind the back of the fuse board where the ECU is where you plug in the easy lift ECU there is no extension to run it so I've had to get creative to buy a new um, center console ashtray and extend the cable so it's going to take a couple of weeks to do it I'm just going to have to be really careful on how I extend that cable and then find a way using a Dremel to sort of open up the hole where the old cigarette lighter used to be to be able to put this dial in. So I won't do it justice by doing a, um, an overview now or a review of it. Give me a couple of weeks and then I'll do a full review with the app and I'll figure out how to turn on my screen capture so you can see that. But I will also show you what I've done to install it on the vehicle. So it's a little bit more complicated to do it this way, but it does work. I've had it tested with the app. I just prefer it with the dial as opposed to having to keep going to the app to move things around. But yes, I'm really happy with it and it does sit um, a lot higher than it normally does. But you can modify those settings as well. A few other things are going to be coming up. I'm going to start tacking the interior. All the LEDs, all the lights have been replaced with LED. Brings it well bang up to date. The windscreen wiper arms are all pitted and they've all corroded as well. They need to come off. So I'm just waiting for a new set of genuine ones to come in and I'm going to do that. I have ordered a new roof rack and that has come from the same company that makes the Easy Lift Kit, a company called Land Rover Passion. They're about the only ones I can find that make a really decent roof rack, which is flat and low profile. So I'm hoping to get that probably in about the next two to three weeks. And once that shows up flat packed, I'll have to put that together. Once that is on, then I can start looking at when the rooftop tank can actually fit onto it or build the cradle to go on for that. So that's not too far away as well. A few other things that I've got that parts are beginning to arrive for is the dual battery system. So I'm going to be putting a dual battery system in the back with a Red Arc BC-DC charger, the Red Arc 1000 watt inverter. I've got an ARB dual compressor that I need to put in as well and then build the frame to hide the fridge slide, the fridge when it goes in, and then all of the other componentry, the power and all the rest of it that needs to go with that as well. So plenty more to come. One other thing I'm going to do is that these things notoriously get bashed around reliability. So I figured what would be a good idea now is that after I do every one of these videos, I'm going to put up how many miles I've driven in between the videos I put out, how many faults, how much money I've spent as far as fixing things that have gone wrong with it, not upgrades, and then how many error codes have appeared over that period of time. 
and then we'll see as we go through I will actually take stock when I finish this thing and then show you how many faults all the problems that potentially have come up and then we'll start debunking these myths that these things are unreliable fingers crossed that I don't end up eating my words on that one but anyway it's in stealth mode purists probably hate it those of you that are like me that think it's good to be able to modify these cars customize them the way you want might love it but the great thing about opinions is everyone's got them and if you do have one leave your opinions below in the comments because feedback is always good and if you like this sort of content I will keep on creating it two things that are coming up is that I got a deadline date to go and take this off-road I'm going to do the Strata Florida with a friend of mine who's got a Defender 90 and that's going to be sometime in February and then we've got a trip booked in May to take this to the Pyrenees through the Spanish Pyrenees I'm really looking forward to that because I think this will be brilliant off-road and then in September we've got a three-week trip planned down the Adriatic into Croatia Montenegro and into Slovenia some of that will be on road or actually most of that will be on road but some of it might be off-road as well because we plan on doing some wild camping in the hills or some wild camping close to the beaches so thanks very much for your time I hope you enjoyed the video I'm not going to beg for any subscribers or thumbs up it's up to you if you like it thumbs up if you don't thumbs down if you want to subscribe please go ahead what's really interesting over the last few weeks is my subscription rate has almost doubled and I've only put out three videos but that's the great thing about doing these content is trying to make things better as we go forward so again thank you very much for your time and I'll see you on the next one cheers